I've been a hobby coder for years. I've worked on everything from Minecraft mods to personal passion projects. And I've also done a lot of programming work in university. But there are still some things that I didn't quite understand about professional coding until I actually became a professional coder. This video is about the things I learned when I went from being a hobby coder to actually working for a corporation as a professional programmer. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Vincent and I'm doing a summer internship as a programmer. So that's what I'm all about. Now, anyways, getting into the list of the lessons I learned for number one we've got working with legacy code now this is something i had no idea about how to do when i was a hobby programmer because when we develop when we are hobby programmers we always develop our own programs from scratch usually so it's it's very easy to maintain it's fresh it's modern it's it's how things work. Whereas now that I work as a professional developer, I'm maintaining and updating code that was written in 2012 and 2015, which is, it's not only old, but it, it may not always be written in a good way because obviously coding conventions have developed a lot since 2012. And this is something they don't really teach us in school or university either, because it's always so focused on how to develop a new project and how to work on something from scratch and stuff like that. At least that's what I learned in university, but I had no idea how to actually maintain someone else's code and work with legacy code that kind of thing so if you're moving from a hobby programmer to a professional coder soon or maybe you're already doing your first days be sure to read some information about how to actually maintain code because there's a lot, lot of good resources out there now the second thing i noticed when i went from a hobby programmer to a professional programmer is the amount of time that i would spend reading and trying to understand other people's code now for example in my work currently i'm maintaining an application from 2015 and it's not really been updated since then and the people who worked on it doesn't work for the company anymore. So I'm trying to approach this application in a way where I try to understand what the type, what the developer was thinking when he was developing it and how it works. And it's quite a complex application as well. So it's taking me a long time to actually understand how it works and just the back end of the entire program. It's also a difficult job because sometimes some people may have done uh, poor solutions because they were in a rush or poorly commented code or bad variable name naming and that kind of thing and that makes it hard for others to read the code so that was something that surprised me is that I would spend a lot of time like sometimes entire work days or maybe like almost a full week just trying to read and understand other people's code. Number three is the importance of soft skills. Now university doesn't teach this enough I would say. They only value the the project you make and the result of it. They don't quite understand or grade or value your soft skills. Now when I say soft skills I mean everything that's not related to writing the actual code and working the computer. Stuff like uh, teamwork, empathy, patience, communication, that kind of thing. I noticed during my first week that I was having problems explaining things to my colleagues so that they would understand and that was completely on me because I hadn't worked on my communication skills well enough and I noticed now just three weeks later that I've actually become very good at explaining my questions, showing my code and that kind of thing to my colleagues and it's, it's a very important skill because that means that I can get help if I get stuck instead of just being on my own. So if you want to be a coder or if you already are are a coder or developer, put some effort into your soft skills because I, for me it's been paying off really well. Being a reliable, friendly and trusted part of the team is just important as the work we do. Now for number four we got the actual mindset where I'm now realizing that my code actually impacts others. A lot of my hobby projects that I made were just for myself. I would be the only user, I didn't plan on releasing them, I was doing it to learn or for fun. Whereas now I write actual production code that other people have to use the code I write is not necessarily used by the company's customers yet, but it's used by the staff and the workers at the actual company. So the code I write will be used by others and it will impact others and it better freaking work. It has to be reliable, not buggy at all, and it has to be very functional and easy to use and user friendly and that kind of good thing, good stuff. And that's something I never really thought about as a hobby programmer. I didn't care that much. As long as I understood how to work the application, everything would be fine. But when we work as professional coders, we have to think less about ourselves and more about the other person, the actual user of the things we create. The fifth thing that kind of surprised me when I went from hobby to professional programmer was the code reviews that we do. And I never really heard about this concept before, which is shocking considering how common it is in the programming industry. And that is that after I've written my code and I'm satisfied with it, I ask a colleague to come and review it and read it and check does the code work as expected? Uh, does memory optimization work? How is the naming, uh, naming of the variables? That kind of thing. Whereas that was something we never really did in school. I remember working in a, at a pro in a programming project for school and everyone just committed and pushed their own things without anyone else actually reading it. As long as it worked, we were happy. Whereas 
and the same thing in hobby projects obviously but when we work at a company everything is a bit more streamlined structured and done in a more professional way we someone else will review your code and you will likely review someone else's code the sixth thing i learned when i became a professional programmer was the importance of documentation at least where i work every single internal application has their own pieces of uh, word documents explaining how the app has been developed how it works and how to integrate it using apis into other programs and applications and that is something i didn't really know about until two or three weeks into my employment and that means that after i had worked at the company for two or three weeks fixed a lot of things added a lot of things to the application someone told me that i needed to update the documentation as well so i had to go back and retrace my steps okay what did i change what bug bugs did i fix what things did i add and then put that into the into the documentation and that was hard it would have been easier for me to just document things properly from the start and that's what i do now now that i'm aware of the documentation concept and process and those were the things i learned this was uh, ended up being a quick video but if you've got any comments or any suggestions about things that you learned when you did this transition then put them below and if you watched this far you probably found this video valuable and in that case please click the like button as that gives back a lot to me as well also if you're watching this far you may actually like this video in which i talk about five life-saving lessons i learned during my first week as a programmer i recorded it fresh on my third day and i think that could be kind of interesting to go back and listen to if you want to so I leave that over there and uh, take care. Oh, voice break.